At what point when you got here did you start hearing about Purdue and Indiana and what it means? Man, <laughs> honestly, I knew a little bit about it before I even got here. Um, you know, kind of just the rivalry between the two. But when I first got here, man, everybody was like, man, I know it's a long ways away, but are you ready for this Purdue IU game? You know, and I, at first, obviously, I couldn't speak nothing of it, but all my teammates, you know, are preaching and this, this, and that. And it was kind of hard, honestly, during earlier in the week to, you know, because I knew we played them Saturday, but we had Penn State first. And I'm like, man, like, I'm trying hard not to think about it because you can't overlook anybody in this conference. But, man, I just keep hearing, you know, some of the things they do, like they'll wait at your bus sometimes, some of the fans, <laughs> and then, you know, heckle you. And then when you get to the – I heard it's crazy, so I'm excited. <laughs> right. Um, you mentioned it, though, but just kind of this team's focus to take care of business on mm -hmm. Wednesday and play well and doing it, not just to get by, but play well and doing it. What's that say about kind of where, where this team's at in a, from, a, from a mental standpoint? It means everything because, you know, to me what those games versus Penn State are called, they're called trap games, um, you know, because you're getting ready to play your rivals on the weekend and they have, they're a game before you, you know. So some teams honestly lose those games because, you know, they're thinking nothing about but the uh, IU game or their rivals. But for us to go out there and have that energy and go out there and beat them like we did, man, I just think it speaks everything to this team and how good we actually are. Um, obviously, one thing we know before any game is we always tell us to each other, we just got to play harder than the next opponent. So we think when we do that, because if you think about it, at the beginning of the year, even when we were winning, we weren't shooting good, but we just play harder than everybody, you know, getting defensive stops. And when we were doing that, we're winning. So we preach that before every other game. And I think that's what's um, kind of helping us toward the success we're having. It's one thing to say that, but then the, to do it? Yeah. Um, I think we're genuinely happy going hard as we can, and it's fun getting on the floor. It's fun getting stops for us. Like, we enjoy more than scoring sometimes, um, as, as funny as it sounds, but we have this thing on our team called kills, and that's three stops in a row. And we try to get about seven or eight of those a game, and, man, I just feel like when we're doing that, we're having fun. We call it out to each other, uh, diving on the floor, getting charges, man. The, those things just hype us all up even more. So what's the closest rivalry that that would compare to Purdue and IU for you that you've, that you've played in? I've had a few in my days. Um, obviously, when I was at South Dakota State, a smaller school, our rivals were University of South Dakota. And it was kind of the same thing. Like, it's funny because some of my teammates and coaches were telling me back in the day a long time ago, what they would do is they would freeze um, dead like uh, jackrabbits and throw them on the court sometimes, you know, during the games. I was like, man, this is crazy. But it was kind of the same type of uh, thing. They didn't do that no more. But... <laughs> And then when I got to Utah, um, excuse me, UNLV, Reno was our was our rivals. Um, that rival was was still okay, probably not as it was back in the day. But when I was at Utah, ours was BYU, um, and that was pretty big time as well. We almost sold the um, the Huntsman Center out of Utah for that. But this right here, I think this is second and none. So I'm excited for this one. I don't think you'll see dead jackrabbits I, on Saturday. I hope but. I don't see no jackrabbits or coyotes <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> um. Now you you got here in the summer. Yep. You didn't. You wasn't here last year when the defense wasn't what it needed sure. to be. But what have you seen from a defensive standpoint with this team that they they seem bought in every game? Yeah, but like I said, man, I just think we enjoy having them playing defense. And you know, I've been on a lot of teams where every and a lot of teams in general, everybody enjoys playing offense. Everybody loves scoring and doing things like that. But you don't find too many teams who love to just genuinely play defense. And I just think that's us. Um, I love like getting stops, and it feels like almost more honoring than shutting down one of the best players compared to hitting a three or something like that. And I think that's how a lot of us think. And I think we're honestly just well connected all the way from the players to the coaches. We execute and go through our game plans in depth and practice, and we make sure we execute those, whether that's you know something as simple as going under a ball screen or going over the top of the ball screen, just certain things like that on some of the good players here in the Big Ten. Um, we think if we can limit certain players and certain actions that teams present to us, then, you know, obviously we'll be able to win. Um, but, again, I just think we all enjoy playing defense, and that's hard to find it rare in you know, college basketball. How much did you have to buy into that? Knowing, I mean, you're, you're a tremendous offensive player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of what – that's who you are. Sure. But have you had to sacrifice maybe a little of that to make sure you get, yeah. you want, you get the minutes that you want? How about a lot of that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, yeah, obviously I came in here as a scorer, you know, was putting up 2,000 points or whatever, but I think that me being on the floor more has become my defense. Payne has trusted me a lot more on the best, um, best the opposing team's guards. Right. You know, it's, whether it's a bigger guard or smaller guard, like he trusts me with them to do that, and that's kind of something I showed 
um, coming in here. I remember when I was in the portal, I knew one thing. Wherever I went, I always wanted to um, show that I could play defense and be a two-way player because you're just more valuable when, you, when you're a two-way player. Everybody got scores and guys who can do that, but when you can play defense and guard the next player's best guard or whoever it is, is man, you're just that much more valuable, and that's something I'm trying to bring to this team. All right, so does the second group, have you guys like come up with a nickname for yourself or anything like that? We haven't that? yet, man, but it's funny you ask that because we've been getting out. Have you guys came up with a nickname and things like that? And I, I'm going to work on one here pretty soon, but I know what's, this is not us as a group, but it's just funny when I'm on Twitter or when I'm looking um, – I forget his complete name, but the volleyball head coach, he called me Junkyard Jenkins, you know? <laughs> so I love that. <laughs> but, you know, guys like that have nicknames. I mean, it's a, it's yeah. a thing, right? Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. I'm, I'm going to come with one for all of us in a minute here. Right. I mean, just the way that the, the, the bench is playing right now, what – what do you see there that's happening that has allowed you guys to, to excel here these last yeah, sure. week or two? It means everything in a really good team. Um, obviously, not every game the starters are going to be able to do it from the jump. You know, like we're, we're, we're not perfect. You know, so being able to have guys who can step in right away, whether that's from the, the, the guard position or from the forward or center position, like we have guys who are ready. And I, myself, being an older guy, I always tell guys on the bench, like, you know, this game you might get in 25 minutes. This game you might get in five, but you gotta stay ready because if you're not ready, and Paint says go in, and you go in, and you mess everything up, you ain't buying we caught again, you know. So it's being able to take advantage of the golden opportunities presented to you, and that's even myself. I always tell myself, like, obviously, yeah, I like to play a lot more, but there's certain games where I know I will play a lot more. Um, hopefully versus IU, because I want to kick that, you know. But you know, but no, I just tell them. I always, you know, make sure to tell them they're ready, and we're all we all been ready. Mason coming in nine threes, that, that's that's ridiculous, you know. And, you know, guys from um, Trey Kaufman to Brandon to all of us, man. I just think we're always going to make sure we're ready. Good deal. Thank you. Hey, Appreciate man. it.